just a little overview on Booleans. Uh, basically, the Bool data type can have a value of true or false. Uh, they're used in conditional expressions. So our selection statements and our repetition or our loops, quite often um, the condition you're testing has a true or a false result. So this is how you set it up. You have a bool data type, you've got your variable, and you're either gonna set it to true or false. And so here's a little example. And there's plenty of examples in uh, CodeEasy <laughs> that you're gonna be coding up. Uh, so here's another little example. And here we've got the Boolean tested in the if statement. So basically you've got workday set to true. And so basically if workday, if workday is true, which it is, it's gonna write out that message. And then we're checking holiday. So holiday is set to false. So it's saying if holiday is true, well, it's not true. So that's not going to um, get written out. Uh, these example, this little example is very simple way of using a Boolean in an if statement. However, most if statements or and conditionals that you use have an expression. And it might be a very simple expression or it could be a more complex expression that's being tested. So we're gonna kind of start with the simple ones where you have uh, a variable or a value. Uh, you've got an operator like greater than, less than, and then you've got another variable or value. I mean, you could have 10 greater than two or 10 greater than 20, which would be false. Okay? Or you could have two different variables. Okay? So there's a lot of ways you can put this together. I, I did list uh, a table here of comparison operators that are used in C Sharp, and then kind of gave you an example with two different variables. And then I've got some programming examples. And so here uh, we've got a minimum age, and then we've got uh, two different variables, Franny and Taylor. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out who gets to ride the roller coaster. And so um, here we're checking Franny's age to see if it's greater than the minimum. If it is, she gets to ride the coaster. And if it's not, she doesn't. And we're doing the same thing for Taylor. Uh, this one, uh, probably more near and dear to your hearts because it's checking scores to see what the student's grade is. So uh, we have an integer score and then we have the if else and we're basically using that to check for the grade. So that's our conditional. Uh, we also have logical operators. Uh, these allow us to create a little bit more complex uh, conditions that we're gonna check because we can check for more than one thing. And so I start here with the logical or, which is basically two vertical lines. And where that's located on your keyboard, it's below your backspace key on the right-hand side, and you do need to press shift to get that. Um, the logical or lets you test multiple values uh, to see if they are true. And only one of them has to be true for the equation to test true. So um, here's an example with department number. If it's a one or a two or a three, then it's going to test true. Um, so only one of them has to be true. And actually in this case, only one of them really can be true. <laughs> um, so here I've got a coding example where I've got the department set to a three. And I'm checking to see if it's a one or a two or a three, which it is. So I would anticipate this message. 
they get their bonus. Um, then if the expression is false, and for this to be false, that would mean that all three of these conditions that are being checked would have to be false. None of them are true, okay? So for this to be false, every single one of them has to be false, in which case uh, they are, uh, then we get this second message. The logical and is a little bit more restrictive than the or because it does require that all of the conditions test true. Uh, so in this little example, I'm um, gonna be looking at department and region. And so I've got the department number set to one and the region set to mountain. And I'm using the logical and. So both sides of this have to be true. So both of these conditions that I'm checking. So is the department equal to one? Yes, it is. Is the region equal to mountain? Yes, it is. And because both are true, that makes the expression true. Now here's an example where one of them is false. So the department is a one, but the region is west. So if one of these is false, it makes the whole expression false. What I have noticed when people are new to coding is that uh, new coders often confuse or and and statements. Sometimes they create uh, conditions that can never possibly be true. They're actually impossible conditions. <laughs> so um, something like this, if department number is a one and department number is a two and department number is a three, that is never gonna happen because department number can only be one value. It is impossible for it to be a one, two, and a three. Okay, so just kind of watch out for that. Um, that is a little trap that I see people fall into quite often. Logical not. I think not logic is confusing for a lot of people because you really have to kind of sit down and think about it for a minute. Um, because what it does is it takes whatever the result was and it makes it the opposite. So if you have a condition that was testing true and you put the not in front of it, it makes it false. And so not logic is a little bit confusing. So if we have something like this, and we've got the department number set to three, this is gonna test true. However, if we take that same conditional check, we put it in parentheses and we stick the not in front of it, it takes that true value and it makes it false. So here's a little programming example with the nots. And then you can see the output that I got. So I'm saying if not, so first we have to kind of look at this and the department is 10. So this is going to test false, but then we got the not in there, so it made it true. So it is gonna say that the department gets a bonus. So then let's look down here. Uh, region is west or it's mountain. This is going to be true, okay? And then we've got the not, so it makes it false. So then what it's gonna do is it's gonna execute this line of code, okay? And that's exactly what it did when it ran. For uh, the X or, this is something that you're probably not gonna use very often, but uh, it is in most languages. And the way that it works is uh, in an X or, you can only have one of the conditions testing true. So it's like an or where you've got multiple conditions, 
but only one of them can be true. The other ones have to be false. If more than one condition tests true, then it makes the whole expression false, which I know is weird. Um, so I've, I actually stole a little example from Cody CS and I modified it. Um, but here you can see, um, we've got eggs, sugar, lemons, those are all set to true. Um, and so then if we do uh, the eggs and the sugar, that's gonna be true. And then if we do the lemons and the sugar to make the lemonade, that's gonna be true. So everything here is true. Um, so if we've got the little XOR symbol though, we've got, uh, it's saying can cook or can cook lemonade. Well, both of those are true. So that's a problem with XOR. Um, it, only one of them can be true for it to test true. Since they're both true, it makes it false. And so it's going to execute this line. Now we come down here and we got eggs and sugar, that's true, but we do not have lemons, so that's false. Um, so can cook is going to be true because we got the eggs and the sugar, but can cook lemonade is going to be false. So when we come down to this if, can cook cake is true, can cook lemonade is false, and that makes XOR very happy. So it's going to come down here and print tasty lunch. Okay, it's going to test true. Complex Boolean expressions. So you can combine these conditional and logical operators in whatever way you need to, to test your conditions. Um, I would recommend using the logical not sparingly because it does muddy up your logic because you're making things opposite of what they test. Um, and I do have some little examples here of, you know, some more involved uh, conditional testing. So here, this is just a, a little salary program. Um, and so we've got salaried set to false. Uh, this is a piece rate employee. They get paid for the number of pieces. Uh, hourly is set to false. Uh, we've got the hours they worked, the number of pieces, and then how much money they get per piece. And so we uh, calculate their salary, which is the number of pieces times the number of amount of money per piece. And then um, if they're not salaried and they're not hourly, okay, and that's true uh, because uh, they're not salaried, they're not hourly, um, and they are piece rate, and the number of pieces is over 100, okay, then we print out their little salary message. So what is this exactly doing? Well, I think piece rate's pretty self-explanatory, right? Because that is set to true. So it's just checking to see if it's true. Pieces greater than 100, that's pretty straightforward too, because pieces is 400. So 400 is greater than 100. This test true. And this value is set to true. So what are these little knots doing? Well, salaried was set to false. So if we put the knot in front of it, it converts it to true. Okay. And for hourly, that was set to false. And we put the little knot in front of it and it converts it to true. So this is true, this is true, this is true, this is true, the whole thing tests true, and right line is printed out. So in this little example, uh, we've got an hourly employee. So salaried and piece rate are set to false. Hourly is set to true. We've got the hours, got the pieces, which is going to be ignored. <laughs> We've got uh, hourly rate, and we're setting salary and overtime to zero. So what we're checking is, we'll start with the easy stuff first. 
Is hourly true? Yep. Are the hours less than or equal to 40? No, that's false. So it's going to pop down into the else. Okay, but we'll take a look at not salary and not piece rate. Um, so salaried was false. And for this whole thing to test true, we had to put the not in front of it, which makes salary true. And for piece rate, it's the same thing. It was false. We put the not in front, so it would convert it to true. So in a scenario where the hours was something like 30, this would all test true. However, in our scenario, the hours is 50. So it's going to come down into this section of code. And it's going to calculate overtime. And then it's going to take the salary, add in the overtime, or it's going to take the uh, hours, add in the overtime, and um, print that out. Now, you may have noticed that if else statements uh, do take up some room vertically in your programs. And programmers are notorious for wanting to shorten things up. <laughs> so <laughs> the ternary operator lets you shorten things up. Um, and when you're first starting out coding, you, you're probably not going to want to use this. But uh, there are certain conditions where it does kind of come in hand handy. And it, it does save you some typing time. Um, so... In a regular program where you're not using the ternary, you might have something like this, where you've got an if that you're checking, and then you're writing one message if it's true and another message if it's false. You can shorten this up using the ternary operator, and you can stick it right in the console.write line. So you can put the condition right in there. So this is the same condition that we had in the if. Okay. The ternary operator is the question mark. So it's actually taking the place of the if. Right after the question mark is what you want it to display because this is in a console.write line. So this is what we want it to print if it's true. Then we have a colon. After the colon is what it's going to print if it's false. Okay, so we took the, the true string and put it here. We took the false string and we put it here. Now, this little program is a rewrite of one that we looked at earlier. Uh, in fact, the one that we looked at earlier is quite a bit longer. I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so here is the one that we looked at before with the um, two if else statements. And this one eliminates those. So we only have one console.write line uh, that's actually testing that first condition. Okay, and then this is the message if it's true, and this is the message if it's false. And then we have a second console.write line that's taking a look at that second condition. And this is what it does if it's true, and this is what it does if it's false, and that's it. So it does really shorten up your code. Uh, another thing that was covered is console.readline. So console.readline lets us make our programs interactive. Yay. <laughs> so we're going to be using this a lot. Um, and so with console.readline, um, you're reading what they've typed and it, you have it in an assignment statement because you want to store it in a variable. Uh, and so you can just take the variable and set it equal to the results, or you can declare the variable and set it equal to whatever console.readline returns. And as long as the variable is a string, 
you are set. You don't have to do anything else. Okay, so what is your name? Name is a string. We declare it as a string. We read in whatever they've typed. And what is your hobby? Same thing. Hobby is a string. We read it in. Everything works fine. Um, it is important that you prompt the user for what you want them to enter. I know in the um, Code Easy exercises, there were a couple where they didn't prompt the user. Um, it's pretty hard for the user to know what to type if you don't prompt them. So <laughs> I want you guys to prompt the users. Um, but what if we want to input a number and we want to store it as a number because we want to do a calculation with it? Uh, what do we have to do? you need to use a conversion method. And there's a couple different typecasting methods you can use. Um, one uses convert methods and the other one uses parse methods. I believe in, in uh, Code Easy they were using the parse methods, but I'm gonna show you both. Uh, so the parse methods, it's pretty easy to use. It's just whatever the data type is, int, double, bool, dot parse, okay? And you put that around the console dot read line. So inside these parentheses is your console dot read line. And that reads it in and converts it, and it allows you to store it in the different data type. Okay, so I've got some examples here, integer ice creams, Enter the number of ice creams um, that you've ordered, and you can see int.parse is converting it to an integer so I can save it. Okay, and you can see I've got double, Boolean, uh, all of the different examples. Nope. Just noticed an, an issue here. Hold on. All right. Uh, I fixed the issue, uh, so now we can move on here. Uh, for the double, we've got double dot parse, um, and you can see the example where we're pulling that in. And for boolean, it's the same thing, bool dot parse. And for character, it's character dot parse, and the example. If you are using dot net fiddle and you want to use a uh, council dot read line, you have got to use the .NET 4.7.2 compiler um, because it handles council input. The .NET 6 compiler at that site isn't supporting it yet. However, in Visual Studio, the .NET 6 handles console input just fine. Okay, so this is a, a .NET fiddle thing. Okay, it's, it's not um, a .NET 6 thing. Um, so most of what we want to do, you can do just fine with .NET 4.7.2. Um, the only thing that you are going to have to modify is it does not allow the string interpolation. So the string interpolation is when we do the dollar sign in the output, I'm looking for an example here, this, where we've got the dollar sign and we are, we've got the variables embedded in here. That version 4.7.2 does not handle that. So instead of using the string interpolation, uh, what you end up having to do is use the old fashioned concatenation. So enter the number of ice creams that, okay? And then you've got the concatenator. Here's your variable concatenator. And then you've got a string here. Okay, so you start with the string. Wherever you want to put your variables, you have to do the concatenation operator. Uh, and that's just 
um, a little limitation to that particular compiler because the string interpolation is newer. Okay, everything else you should be able to do. And if you're using .NET Fiddle, you definitely have to use this version or you're not going to be able to read your console input. Now, in addition to the parse methods, there are convert methods. And these are ones that you may see more often, especially if you start looking around online. So I wanted you guys to realize that these are there as well. Um, and so uh, to use it, it's just, if it's integer, it's convert to int 32. And then inside the parentheses, you have console.readline. Uh, for double, it's convert to double. Boolean, convert to Boolean, and care is uh, convert to care. Okay, so very similar to the parse methods. Okay, and it's really up to you which ones you want to use. Um, I basically took that same program and I did it in Visual Studio using .NET 6. And I did use the string interpolation in this one. Uh, so same exact program as above, but you can see I used the conversion methods. And then I also did the string interpolation. 